to the inaugural seminar in our 2013 series, Liverpool Waters, the Opportunity of a Lifetime. Once the government decided that it was not going to call in the planning application for a public inquiry, it was clear that the time had come to refocus a heated debate from the antagonistic and divisive pro and con arguments to a simpler question. How can we ensure that the city and the nation gets the very best possible development out of this prestigious World Heritage Site? For all the citizens of Liverpool, this is indeed the opportunity of a lifetime. And there is such a rich civic and architectural heritage in the city that it is incumbent upon this generation to stand on the shoulders of the giants who laid down the foundations of the city we have today and left us such an incomparable legacy. And so we've chosen the Liverpool Medical Institution as the venue for our first seminar. This venerable grade two star listed neoclassical building was built in 1837, but the institutions that founded it go back to 1779. It has been the scene of far-reaching debates which have revolutionised medical history and the meeting place of our most eminent surgeons and physicians since the early 19th century. It is most fitting that we should be here tonight to commence a serious reflection upon the use to which the city will put the wastelands of the former central docks. This very place is a reminder to us of the foresight and vision of previous generations whose contribution to the city continues to enrich our lives today. Can we do the same for generations as yet unborn? This series has been made possible by the generous support of Neptune Investments who welcomed the opportunity to help engage create a space where everyone can respectfully express their ideas about Liverpool's future growth and development. We're also grateful to Agent Marketing, whose creative genius and support has delivered the amazing publicity materials. Engage is an independent grassroots social enterprise <coughs> that is happy to work with everyone to improve the quality of life for all residents. We decided early on that we would not ask for nor accept any support from Peel Holdings, but we have shared with them our ideas for the series, and they've been very supportive. We made a decision not to ask them to take part in these reflections so as not to deflect our discussions from the bigger questions upon which we hope to focus. And setting the tone and parameters for us tonight, we have two exceptional people whose presence in our city is a great honour and delight for all of us. Professor Michael Hebert, on my immediate left, is Professor of Town Planning at University College London and editor of the leading international journal of Town Planning Town Planning History, Planning Perspectives. Born in Glasgow, he grew up in Birmingham, in uh, Flagburn, Lancashire, where the demolition of the old market halls in 1964 triggered a lifelong interest in urban design. He read history at Merton College, Oxford, did a PhD with a very young, presently Sir Peter Hall at Reading University, and has combined a teaching and research career at Oxford Brooks, the London School of Economics, the University of Manchester and UCL, with involvement in numerous 
grassroots <coughs> initiatives, including Care for St Anne's at Limehouse, Vision for London, the Limehouse Basin Cooperative, and Coates Buildings Preservation Trust and the Manchester Civic Society. Between 2004 and 2008, he chaired the design review panel for London Cross Rail. A resident of Limehouse in the London Docklands since 1979, and Piccadilly Basin, in Manchester since 1994, he takes a very close interest in waterfront development projects. Roadmore, on my far left, is the architecture critic of The Observer. He trained as an architect at St John's College, Cambridge, but having gone into practice, turned to journalism. He has been editor of the Architecture Journal Blueprint and has written as the architecture critic for the Evening Standard and the Daily Telegraph and written in the Guardian. In 2002, he succeeded Lucy Musgrave as the editor of the Architecture Foundation, leaving to concentrate on journalism full time in 2008. Rowan has curated several exhibitions given lectures, appeared on TV and radio, taken part in conferences and debates, and chaired or participated in juries for design awards and competitions, including the Golden Lion at the Venice Architecture Biennale. His publications include his well-known book, Why We Build, which was published in 2012. John Kampner wrote in The Observer in January of this year that Rowan is, and I quote, one of the UK's most accomplished writers on the profession. He critiques the most important buildings and the people who masterminded them with a style that is both entertaining and cuts through the crap. His overarching message in the book is that buildings are inextricably linked to time and space. Quote, buildings will never exist independently of the stuff around them and the events and thoughts that occur both inside them and out. And Rowan concludes, one description of that architecture is that it ignores this inescapable circumstance. I look forward, as all of you will do now, to hearing the presentations, first of all, delivered by Rowan, and then secondly, by Michael.